I don't really remember a lot about the circus until uh, I was four or five years old, and then I began performing immediately at five. Doing what? I was the guy, the kid, my dad did a rolling glowback, and where he juggled on the rolling, standing on a giant ball, and one of the, the finished trick was to get me to stand in front of the ball. He reached down and picked me up by my hands, set me on the ball, and reached down and grabbed me again, bring me up to his shoulders, set me on his shoulders, then I'd stand on his shoulders, and we'd both stop. A little kid doing that brought down the house, usually, and uh, that was my earliest memories of performing. But after that, my brother and I formed what we called the jumping jacks. We were trampoline performers. And we did a double routine every day, twice a day, uh, on the trampoline as well. Later on, I decided I wanted to be a tight wire walker. And uh, so I trained to do that. And it, uh, all this training was, was difficult to uh, teach somebody to perform professionally. But my mother was almost like a ballet teacher. I mean, that's how graceful she was and how beautiful she styled. And she taught us all how to respect the audience. Don't turn your back on the audience. No matter what's happening in your life, you're smiling and you're having a good time. You know, and that was the, that was the idea. And we were trained rigorously to do tight wire walking. You start with a low wire about two feet off the ground. It's made of steel cable. And you wear small leather pumps so that you can feel the wire. But it's very hard on the feet. So every year before we started out, I'd spend two or three weeks working on the low wire and barely being able to walk because your feet were so sore and bruised. Uh, and that would be just before we left school. We usually left school a, a month early and came in a month late. We had to do, make up our lessons in advance when we left and we had to do our lessons and send them in when we were coming back in. Later on, the school refused to do that when I was in high school and my folks left us with people so that we could finish school and then rejoin the, the show as soon as we got out of school. But that was always hard on my folks. It was better if they could take us with us because, you know, we did like 11 acts, you know, and that's almost a whole circus. You throw in a few animals and you got a whole circus. In fact, there was a fellow later on that did it on Fairyland Circus and we were about the only people on the show other than the animal handlers and we did 11 acts. They made up a program with all of our pictures on it and all of that. And, and we used to get to stand and sign autographs at the end of the show, you know, on the pictures. But uh, it, it just was an odd place to grow up. It had its inherent dangers, but I wouldn't trade it for anything on earth. Later on, uh, my senior trip was to Vietnam. And my brother and I both went to Vietnam, and I believe that we survived it because of our skills and our abilities that we learned and the hardships that we went through on show business. My brother had three squads that all were killed or wounded in Vietnam. He was about the sole survivor. And I, I give that as a testament to his earlier life. He just knew when to duck, he knew how to be faster, he knew what line to get in and what line to get out of, and I did the same thing. So I think it, uh, it really served us well when we went back. We got back from Vietnam, all we wanted to do was get back in show business. And we did. When I was uh, eight years old, I had an accident on the circus. Uh, it was about the time of my birthday because I remember I had a quarter in my shoe. But uh, the horse act had got, bought a new horse. And uh, uh, the horse was a rodeo trained horse to, to rope and calf roping, and uh, I was going to be the cow that day. So he roped me and tied the rope off to the saddle horn just like any cowboy would do, and he jumped off to come over and tie me up like a cow. Well, the horse got scared. It was uh, unfamiliar with the territory. We were right in the backyard of the tent circus, and it took off running. Well, I got the rope off of me all the way to here when another horse stepped on me, and the rope went around my neck. And the horse drugged me for several blocks. My dad actually outran the horse and stopped it. Uh, they didn't give me much for my chances. They told my folks I wouldn't make it through the night. Uh, I spent three years in and out of hospitals with operations down in Houston, in the Shrine Hospital and the Texas Children's Hospital, where they rebuilt my throat and put my neck back together. And I came back, and the only thing I wanted to do was get back into show business. 
and I became a performer seriously after that, after that accident. But the circus always had dangers. My brother was clawed by lions. I always had to feed some of the caged animals, you know, and that's a dangerous job for a young guy. But to feed a tiger or a baboon or a, a chimpanzee or a lion. Uh, but we did, we were, there was a deal in circus business that you, you sign on to be such and such, but you make yourself generally useful in all departments. And so whatever happened to the circus as a whole, it affected everybody. So if there was a storm coming, everybody was out there. If the tent got blown down and ripped up, everybody went out there and sewed the tent back up so that we could get back with our business, you know. Uh, it, it's a tight-knit group on a circus. A small town that moves to small towns around the country.